Hello, my name is William Craycroft Ely from Terra Vesta, and I'd just like to say how delighted we are to be supporting the uh, Moana Water of Life conference. It's particularly important uh, for me to be part of this because uh, I really want to put across something that is going on in agriculture in the UK uh, that is probably groundbreaking and changes um, previous and generally held uh, pre preconceptions. So Terra Vesta is all about producing biomass feedstocks based on the perennial grass, Miscanthus, and this is it. It is a truly jungle-like Asiatic C4 uh, grass. It looks a little bit like bamboo and it is a perennial. So uh, you cut it down every year and it regrows from nothing. It's a massive solar panel, so it generates all its own energy and it stores its energy in the rhizome root system every single year. Perennial crops with very big root systems, such as Miscanthus, are, are winners in a number of respects. So uh, firstly, in terms of either, either, dr either drought or indeed flooding, they are much, much more stable. So you don't get um, uh, the issue of having to expose your soil uh, where you get tremendous erosion uh, attached to that in terms of, in terms of runoff and flooding. Uh, in terms of drought security, they're not having to start from a seed every year, so they will find available water much better than anything else. But above all else, the only biomass you take off these plants is that that is growing above ground. Every year, an equal amount of biomass is growing below the ground in the root systems, which is regenerating the whole time. So you've got old root systems dying off, being replaced with new root systems. And the amount of organic matter that creates is simply enormous. That has two really important effects. One is it improves below soil life, which is uh, more than half of all life uh, on this globe. Uh, but the other is that actually it massively Im improves the soil holding capacity of the, of the water. So in terms of flood risk, uh, this can be used on floodplains to massively de-risk uh, towns. In terms of making sure that it's a stable and secure crop, it of course uses that extra holding capacity to see it through droughts that are otherwise very depleted soils all suffer from. When we started this, it was just all about producing biomass to be burnt in power stations. And to be honest, in the UK, that is the majority of our market. But actually, there are all sorts of other opportunities. So it can be, uh, it can be refined, it can have fibre extracted, and that can go into building materials, or it can go into fabrics and, uh, and other things. It can uh, be refined to produce bioethanol, and it can be refined into producing industrial sugars, which can then be turned into the compostable plastics. But the story is much bigger than just the end uses. The story is about the societal benefits that that all brings. So we're engaged in <coughs> a project in Africa where we are just burning the miscanthus, but we're turning it into briquettes. Those briquettes get given out to be burnt instead of just cutting down the rainforest and other trees. In Moldova, we're working to resolve real heat poverty because they're entirely uh, dependent on imported uh, gas, electricity and oil. And uh, this gives them something that they can produce at home on farmland that is incidentally post-Soviet era very highly contaminated with pesticide residues and this will clean that land up. And in 10 years time, they'll not only have uh, energy security, but they'll have some very, very good farmland to go back to as well. So there are some tremendous societal and human benefits to this, as well as just uh, products. In terms of the function of plants in CO2 absorption and carbon sequestration, it is generally assumed that we must simply plant more trees. These grasses will produce their first crop after two years and will produce a crop annually thereafter of about 15 tonnes per hectare. 
that compares very favorably with the most efficient uh, tree conversion.